Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for jumping on tonight. I see, um, I see all the participants are joining in. So I'm just going to wait one minute. Okay, everybody, um, I think I'm going to jump in. So my name is Tom Ehlers. Um, I'm the president and founder of Method Test Prep, and I have presented um, with Sydney um, a number of times uh, before and presented to, uh, to the NSHSS community. Um, and so um, when, when I present, uh, there's a lot of information for me to share. And typically there are um, many, many questions, which is obviously a good thing. Um, there is a, a question area that you can feel free to use. Um, and so I will talk quickly because I want to be sensitive to everybody's time, but the feedback that we've gotten from NSHSS parents, um, yeah, thanks, Sydney. Um, yeah, if you have questions, and, and actually let me encourage everybody um, you will have questions, and you probably have questions right now. Please feel free to, um, as Sydney said, direct them to the Q&A box, um, because I am going to answer um, many, many questions. And of course, that makes the that that, that makes this this presentation night more interactive, more engaging, more conversational. So I I, I would really like um, people to put any questions that they have. Um, anyway, the feedback that we've gotten from parents in the past has been that. The, that the information was easy to digest. So, um, so again, I'll talk quickly because I wanna get through a lot in as short a time as efficiently as possible. So, and you probably saw in my chat, everyone, uh, grab a pen or pencil, paper, because people do take a lot of notes during this presentation. Um, okay, actually there's a question. Yeah, thank you, Christine. Um, best last minute ACT tips for first time takers. So, um, and, and just because I want to encourage everybody to ask questions and I thank you, Christy, for this question. I'll, I'll give you one right off the bat, which is the ACT is, the challenge is the timing, right? You have to move very, very quickly. So a last minute, and when, when you say last minute, um, I'm gonna assume that um, your son or your daughter or you maybe are taking the test on February 12th. Um, and so in the neck, if that's the case, um, or any, any time you're taking the ACT, something to do last is do a practice ACT under timed conditions, because you have to get used to moving very quickly. When I was growing up, my parents um, said the same thing as I'm sure many of you parents out there, which is double check everything, double check, triple check, make sure you know, you're not missing something. You can't really do that on the ACT. You have to go with your first instinct and move on. Now, the good news is many of the questions on the ACT are straightforward. So often your first instinct is going to be correct, but it, it's, it's a different mentality than if you had more time. So you have to just read the question quickly on the ACT, go with your first instinct, put it down and move on. And the good news is in a lot of cases, you'll be correct, but you just don't have time to double check your work, things like that. Um, Okay, yep, so thanks, Christine, for that question. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, and I always start off, everybody, 
Um, if you're going to listen to me for a little bit, it's good to know a little bit about me. So I grew up on Long Island in New York. I went to Princeton University. I completed the teacher preparation program at Princeton. And then I, um, when I graduated, came back to Long Island and my parents spent their whole careers as teachers. And they said, Tom, we have a lot of students here at our high school who are not doing well in the SAT and ACT. Maybe you could help them. So this was back in 1998. Don't do the math on that. I started tutoring students and I saw very quickly that um, students were going into these exams without any strategies or techniques. They often had no idea how to approach the timing aspect of the exam. In many cases, the students weren't, didn't even know what they were going to be tested on. They didn't even know the, the topics they were going to be tested on. So they, they were really going in cold and they were scoring so far below their potential. And anything I taught them was making a difference. And the student was saying, thank you. The parent was saying, thank you. The parent was saying, would you like a chicken cutlet Parmesan hero? Once I heard that, I said, uh, yes, please. And you know, would you like some warm chocolate chip cookies? And I just said, I'm going to do this all day, every day. It was such a gratifying job. And for about a decade, for 10 years, I just tutored all day, every day. And I saw that I was making an enormous impact. Students were scoring much higher. And then we created a web-based program so that students can access this information all day, every day. Um, and obviously, um, we wanted to even level the playing field as much as possible. Um, every, we want every student to have access. And I'll share that program in a little bit. As NSHSS members, you get a significant discount off the cost of that program. Um, so, um, so and, and that's, again, that's what I've really been doing the last 24 years, is helping parents and students, helping families um, navigate this process, this SAT, ACT, PSAT process, and um, get the highest score possible in the most efficient way. And that's what we're gonna cover today. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so well, one other thing I wanna share about myself is I'm a parent myself, my son and my daughter are in seventh grade. So everything I share with you tonight, is it's based in realism. Uh, I'm realistic, I'm reasonable. I know what everybody's been, I know how crazy every household has been um, and just everything that goes along with that. So this is my son, Jonathan. This was taken right before the pandemic. Um, I need to update this picture because he's, uh, he's grown quite a bit. But, um, and then here's my daughter, Julia, and my wife, Allison, who's a speech pathologist in, in a school. And so our household has been just as nutty as all of yours. And I'm not that many years behind everybody, right? Because my son and my daughter are now in seventh grade. So they're going to be taking the SAT and ACT in just a few short years. Last thing about me is I actually sat, I took the SAT a few years ago. Um, I wrote a piece about it and the local newspaper published it and they titled it Old Guy Takes the SAT. It was in Newsday, the Long Island newspaper. And it was my experience taking the SAT as, a, as an old guy. And people say, well, Tom, what did you learn from that? And what I learned, it was a reminder to me of just how much anxiety and stress plays a factor in this whole thing. Like, I remember being nervous and anxious and the test didn't even matter to me, right? I wasn't, the, my score wasn't gonna have any effect whatsoever, right? So if I was nervous as somebody who is an experienced tutor and it didn't matter, it reminded me of how nervous, you know, this, this whole process, nerve wracking it can be. And people say, well, Tom, exactly. Like how, how can we help on that front? And the answer is, and I know it sounds like a cliche answer, but just a few hours of practice can make an enormous difference. So e even though I was nervous, I wasn't as nervous because I knew exactly what to expect. I knew what I was gonna be tested on. And so um, I'm not saying that we're going to help a student go from, let's say on a scale of one to 10, a student has an anxiety level of a nine. I'm not saying we're gonna go from a nine to a two, but even if we go from a nine to a six, right, or a 10 to a seven, that can make an enormous difference on a student's score. So um, I'm not gonna sit here and tell students to put in 100 hours of practice. Of course, they would be more relaxed if they did. But even if a student put in five hours of practice, they're going to be much less nervous because they're going to know what to expect. And I'm gonna give you many, many very um, specific um, tips or strategies or techniques um, to feel or, or to be more in the know. So I love to use this slide. If you only remember one thing from this presentation, I want it to be this. 
these tests are so predictable. They literally test students on the same things over and over and over again. Because they're so predictable, they warrant preparation, right? If these tests were not predictable, it wouldn't make sense to prepare. Why prepare? We have no idea what to expect. Because they're so predictable, it, preparing makes an enormous difference. For years, these tests were thought of as IQ tests. And, and years then finally, years ago, that was proven to be ridiculous. These are not IQ tests. The SAT is a test of how many SAT questions you've practiced. If you practice enough, you get really comfortable and really familiar with the questions. The ACT is a test of how many ACT questions you practice. So I'm very passionate about this. Every student can make a massive difference on their score. So our goal tonight is very straightforward. I want to help every single person on this call use higher ACT and SAT scores to get accepted to more places, to have more options, right? No one wants to apply to eight schools and only get accepted to one or two. My goal is that you have more choices, more options. So we're going to use higher scores to get accepted to more places and more competitive places and to earn more in academic merit aid. Um, and when I, when, I get, when I give this presentation in person, I say, let me see a show of hands. How many people realize if you score higher on the SAT or ACT, then you will get accepted to more colleges? And just about every hand goes up. No surprise. People know that. You score higher on the SAT or ACT, you get accepted to more places. And then I say, how many of you know that if you score higher on the SAT or ACT, you, you often get a larger academic merit aid package? And maybe 40% of the hands in the room go, go up. And that always shocked me because I thought it was common knowledge. It's very, very um, common for students to, if one student gets, you know, has the exact same uh, qualifications and has a 1200 on the SAT, they get X in academic merit aid. That same student who has a 1300 will get X plus, let's say a couple of thousand dollars. So just by scoring a hundred points higher, you may save yourself and your family $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a year, which over the course of four years is a tremendous amount of money. So um, th this screen, our goal, it's a very realistic goal and it's a very important goal, right? So it's definitely worth a few minutes tonight for us all to talk about this and make sure every one of you is crystal clear on the things you can do to score as high as possible, get accepted to more places, earn more in academic merit aid. So sometimes I joke, if you only remember two things from this presentation, I want this to be number two. So here's the question. If a student gets just one more question correct on the SAT, how many points does his or her score often go up? The answer is 10 points. Think about that for a second. If you get five more math, five more grammar, and five more reading, that's a 150-point improvement on your SAT score. I am very passionate that every single student on, on this webinar every, and every single student period can learn to get five more grammar questions, five more math questions, and five more reading questions, and, 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 and score 150 points higher. And when I share that with students, I can see their attitude start to change. I can see the light bulb go off in their head because deep down, they know they can do that, right? It's a very, um, it's a very tangible goal, and it's a realistic goal. Um, so again, keep, you know, jot that down, keep that stat in your head, five more math, five more grammar, five more reading plus 150 points. And the SA, on the ACT, the news is just as good. If you get three or four more questions, right on each part of the ACT, your ACT score will go up by three or four points. So again, a very realistic goal. Okay. Let's go through a couple of data points. Uh, the national average on the ACT is a 21. Uh, many of you know the maximum score on the ACT is a 36. So when somebody says to me, what's a good score on the ACT? Anything above a 21 is above average, right? So um, like a lot of students, they want to score a 30 or above. And I think that's a great goal. But if you score a 27 or a 28, that, that's an excellent score. That is way above average. So, of course, good is a relative term. When students ask me what's a good score, of course, I tell them to Google a couple of the colleges they're interested in. Google average SAT or ACT scores at blank. And then, of course, you want to score at that level or above 
to give yourself the best chance. SAT, the maximum score is a 1600. The national average is about a 1060 or 1070. So anything above a 1060 or 1070 is above average. Uh, as far as a good score, again, relative term, but uh, 1,200 has long been thought of as a benchmark. Right? If you score above a 1,200, that's obviously way above average. So uh, that would be considered a good score. Okay, um, so what would I do if I had an 11th grader? Or what would I do if I was an 11th grader? So, um, so for any of you on this call um, who's an 11th grader or parents, if you have an 11th grader, and then obviously for folks in 10th grade, 9th grade, this is a key slide because this, I'm gonna lay out the timeline for junior year. So when my son and my daughter are in 11th grade, um, these are the test dates. So they're gonna be taking the March SAT and these are the three ACT test dates that they might take. So December is already passed, which is fine. I would, at this moment, I would focus on the April and June. Now, and this is a slide you probably want to take a screenshot of, take a picture of. These are the test dates where you can pay the college board or the ACT an extra $20, and they will send the entire test back to you. Um, and the shame, and so on the SAT, it's called the question and answer service. On the ACT, it's called the TIR, test information release service. The shame to me is that for 24 years of doing this, talking to families all around the country, most families I talk to are not aware of these services. So let me, let me, ex here's how I like to explain it. Imagine taking a four hour exam, getting a score you're not completely satisfied with. No one tells you what you did wrong. And then somebody says, go take that test again. That's absurd. Why would I take a test again when I don't know what I did wrong the first time, right? So the good news is there's a better way. So like my son and my daughter, they are going to, going to be taking the March SAT. And I'm going to say to them, you're not taking the SAT. Now, of course, this is March of junior year. You're not taking the March SAT because it's ultimately going to be your best score. You're taking the March SAT so we can see what you're doing wrong and we can learn, you can learn from your mistakes, use that as a stepping stone to score higher on your second and hopefully final SAT. And I think taking the SAT for a second time in May makes a lot of sense for, um, for many students because they've prepared, hopefully they've prepared leading up to March. So all those strategies and techniques and things, they're fresh in their head. So, um, so yeah, so th this question and answer service is unbelievably important. When you register for the SAT, they make it fairly prominent. They say, do you want the question and answer service? You check the box, you pay an extra $20, and then you can actually see the questions you've answered incorrectly. And again, same thing with the ACT. Um, and so, so just keep these three test dates in mind for ACT, December, April, and June. Those are the three that my son and my daughter are going to be focusing on because I don't want them to take a four-hour exam on a, one of the other months where I can't see the questions that they're getting wrong and I can't help them learn from those mistakes. So um, timeline is simple. March SAT, April ACT, I do believe it's smart to take each test once. Now, I'll give you a couple of facts that you might want to jot down. 70% of students score about the same on the SAT and ACT. So for most students, it doesn't really matter which test they focus on. They're going to score about the same on both exams. But for 30% of students, they score much higher on one test over the other. So that's why my son and my daughter are going to take each test once, because I don't like to try to predict which test the student's going to do better on. Sometimes it is a little bit luck of the draw, how they just how they feel that day. And if they get reading passages that either they're knowledgeable about or they just find a little bit less boring. Um, so um, it's important to take each test once because you might be one of those students who scores much higher on one test over the other. You never would have known that. Another thing I want to mention is uh, there's so much overlap between these two exams. They're about 80% testing on the same stuff, right? So it's the same grammar on both exams. Reading comprehension is reading comprehension, right? So it's all the same strategies there. Math, there's so much overlap. So the content on the two exams is, is there's so much overlap. It's just that the format of the two tests is a little bit different. And I'll go over a couple of those differences in a minute. 
Okay, so we spent a bunch of time on this slide, but it's a, it's a key slide. So I, I always like to spend a little more time. So I like to post this. These are the upcoming ACT test dates because I like everybody to see that you have many, many choices coming up. I don't want students to feel like they're locked into one test date. Now, of course, I said that I, I prefer the April and June exams, but I just want students to know that you know, it's not like it's now or never. You have plenty of opportunities to take the exam. And then SAT, same thing. Uh, many opportunities throughout the year. Each test is given seven times throughout, throughout the year, and that's not even including many of you, your, your school will uh, provide an in-school test, right? So they just have a day throughout the year where um, every, let's say every 11th grader in the school takes the SAT or takes the ACT, and that could be on a different day. So again, the point of these two slides is just to show that there are many opportunities. Of course, you can Google upcoming test dates and get the information that way. So, um, <clears throat> of course, this is a, um, a really commonly asked question. I've heard that many schools are test optional. Can you clarify? So test optional means you don't have to submit scores to, uh, to apply to that college. Of course, if you do submit scores, they will take those scores into consideration, right? So um, it's a little bit, it, it's a little bit misleading, I think, this whole idea of test optional because what colleges are saying is they're saying like we're going to look at a student holistically. We're going to take all everything into consideration, extracurriculars, you know, um, letters of recommendation, the college essay, and that makes sense. And hopefully, that's what they've been doing for a long time now, looking at a student holistically. But of course, one component of a student's application could be test scores. So it's hard to imagine two students who have the exact same extracurriculars and exact same uh, kind of you know, have taken the similar classes, have a similar GPA. One student um, submits SAT or ACT scores that are very strong. Another student doesn't submit scores. It's hard to imagine that, that you know, they are not going to take those scores into consideration, right? So the, the um, the challenge is that it's case by case. Every college is different. So for me, if it was my son or my daughter uh, in 11th grade right now, my son or my daughter would be preparing for the SAT and ACT, preparing to do as well as possible, and they would be submitting scores because I want my, we all want our kids to have every advantage possible, right? And so some colleges have said, well, it's not a requirement for admissions, but if you wanna qualify for all of the different scholarship opportunities, then you have to submit scores. Of course, in that case, you're gonna submit scores because you want to be eligible for all the different scholarships. Other schools have said, if you want to, you know, it's test optional to apply here, but if you want to apply to the School of Nursing or the Business School or the Engineering School, then you have to submit scores. And again, in that case, um, many, many students are gonna want, the point of the story is it's one of, the, one of those many cases in life where it's better be safe than sorry, right? Um, and I also talked to this, um, this representative from college, and he said, he, he, it was being more general, and he said, listen, if you really want to go to a school, whatever the school says is optional, you do that thing, right? So if a college says, like, you only have to submit one letter of recommendation, but a second one is optional, of course, you're gonna have, you're gonna find somebody else to write you a letter of recommendation because you want to do everything possible to have a robust application, right? So um, there's like a lot of things in life. When somebody says it's optional, but if you really want to to go there, or, you know, get into that thing, then you're gonna do all of those optional things. So we could spend an hour on this, and I and, and I don't want to do it to you. The bottom line is. If, if it was my son or my daughter, they'd be taking the exams, they'd be submitting the strongest scores possible, um, um, you know, so, so they weren't at any kind of disadvantage. Um, okay, let's rapid fire, go through a couple of questions here. If you get a question wrong on the SHACD, you lose how many points? The answer is zero. Uh, many of you probably know this already. There was a time where you actually lost a quarter of a point if you got one wrong on the SAT. That, years ago, they stopped doing that. So there is no penalty for wrong answers. There's no reason to omit a question. In other words, there's no reason to leave a question blank. And the reason, a lot of you probably know this already, but I like to remind students of this or remind families of this every time I do this presentation because 
I've seen so many question and answer services where the student left a lot of questions blank. And um, they, were, they were told to answer every question, but in the heat of the moment, they forgot. So we have to keep reminding students, answer every question. You're at a disadvantage if you don't answer every question because you have nothing to lose. You can't get it wrong. So how many questions are on the 45 minute ACT English section? I love this as just like a, like a little poll. So you know, don't put it in the question and answer, just kind of think of the answer in your head. How many questions do you think um, are on the 45 minute ACT English section? So when I ask this question, a lot of times I get 45, 50, 60. The answer is 75, 75 questions. And that's shocking to most people, right? Because if you do the math, that means you're only getting 35 seconds a question. And people say, well, like, that's crazy. And here's the thing. It's difficult to answer 75 questions in 45 minutes, but it's not impossible. There's two really important points that I think that this slide illustrates. Number one is, let's say you're working very quickly and in 44 minutes, you get through 65 questions, right? That's working pretty fast. And at that moment, the proctor says there's one minute left. As Soon as you hear that, you have to stop what you're doing and you have to bubble in an answer for those last 10 because there are only four answer choices on the ACT English. So if you just put in B, 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 B for those last 10, you're gonna get two and a half more questions correct just from randomly guessing. You may get lucky, you may get three correct or four correct, right? So, um, so the, and, and that can be a three or four point increase on your ACT English score. So the point is you have to answer every question. That's number one. Number two is, again, people say to me, how is it possible to answer 75 questions in 45 minutes? Well, the answer goes back to my first slide. These tests are so repetitive. So on the ACT English section, they just test you on the same 11 grammar rules over and over and over again. You can easily study those rules. You can memorize them. They're not hard to understand. And so when you have those rules memorized, you can get through 75 questions in 45 minutes. So again, this slide, even though it's just a question, it, it um, it leads us to make a couple of important points, a couple of important reminders. Okay, so I always joke, um, I'm such an SAT, ACT nerd, I can't help myself. I wanna give everyone an example of a very predictable question that you can learn very quickly. So go ahead and read this sentence to yourself. And again, don't put it in the chat or the, sorry, the question and answer area. Just have the answer in your head. Where do you think the error is? <clears throat> Okay, so everybody have an answer before I say it. So it was more fun to at least have a guess. <clears throat> the error is right here. The congressional panel issued their findings. No, it would be the congressional panel issued its findings, right? Because it's one panel. So since it's a singular subject, you need a singular pronoun. Now people of course say, hey, wait a second. A panel is a group of people. So since it's a group of people, it should be there. And of course, that's true, a panel is a group of people, but it's still one panel. It's not panels, right? So this is called subject pronoun agreement. And it's, it's a rule that's very easy to understand, but you have to know to look for. So whenever they underline a pronoun like they or it's, that's kind of a red flag that this might be a subject pronoun. Where what gets really interesting to me is there are three or four of these types of questions on every single SAT or at ACT. So if you just learn this one thing, you're getting three or four more questions right for the price of one, right? So your SAT score will go by 30 or 40 points just by knowing this one additional thing. <clears throat> and there are many other examples like this. Um, okay. So yeah, so earlier I, I, I said I would share what are the differences between the SAT and ACT? So a big difference is there are four sections on the SAT and four sections on the ACT. So same number of sections, but two of the four sections on the SAT are math sections. Only one of the four sections of the ACT is a math section. So think about that. That's a huge difference percentage wise, right? So um, if a student is stronger in math than they are in English, they may feel more comfortable on the SAT because 50% of their score is gonna come down to how they perform on the math sections. 
On the other hand, if a student's stronger in English than they are in math, they may feel more comfortable on the ACT because three, three of the four sections come down to their English ability. And a matter of fact, any of you out there um, that are strong English students, um, I want you to go into the ACT with a chip on your shoulder because you have the ACT English section. That's essentially the grammar section we just talked about. You can do very well in that section. Just study the rules, know the rules, you'll do well on that. Then you have the ACT reading section. They give you all the answers in the passages. Now you have to move quickly, but you can find those answers. They're right in the paragraphs. So you can do very well in the ACT reading section. And then there's the ACT science section, but it's, it's actually called science reasoning because they give you charts, graphs, tables, and you have to pull the information out of what they give you, right? It's not, they're not testing you on just like science facts where you have to study chemistry and biology. The information is right there on the page, right? So it's more, it's, it's essentially a reading comprehension section. So three of your four sections come down to your, your, your verbal ability. So that's why I want students who are strong in English to go into the ACT with a chip on their shoulder, expecting to do well. Okay, let me pause for a second. I want to take these couple questions here. Yes, yeah, Stacy. good question. When do the ACT exams start? So seven times a year. Typically, the exams are given on a Saturday, you know, nine in the morning. Um, and so actually, that's a good point where practicing in the morning is a good idea, right? Because students have to get used to waking up first thing in the morning is, you know, they're going to be taking a long, grueling exam. Of course, and I know this sounds so obvious, but I have to say it getting a good night's sleep the night before the exam, eating a healthy dinner, having a healthy breakfast, bring water to the exam, uh, the testing center, bring, bring a couple of snacks. I brought a whole bag of granola bars when I took the SAT. Now, I, I didn't eat the whole bag, but I ate two or three because we all know you can't think on an empty stomach, right? Your, your, your brain you know, it is obviously needs nutrients to, to function. So, Anyway, good question there, Stacy. And then Tammy, okay. Yeah, what's the primary difference between the ACT and SAT? And I know I just shared a, a major difference. One other difference that I want to share is on the ACT, you get less time per question, which I know I kind of shared earlier um, in response to that, to that question from before. But um, so, so on the ACT, you get less time per question. Both tests are difficult to finish in time but the ACT is even more difficult to finish them. Now, again, ACT questions are more straightforward, so it's appropriate. Um, but one thing I should highlight about this is many students have the wrong approach. They're obsessed with getting to all the questions. So they move as quick, they move too quickly, they rush, and they get some of the early questions wrong. That's a bad approach because many of the sections go from easiest to hardest. There's no section that goes like hardest to easiest. So, the point is, it's more important to ace the easy and medium ones and go maybe a little bit slower because most students are not getting those last couple of questions correct anyway. So more important to go a little slower at the beginning, make sure you're getting all the easy and medium ones. And if you don't get to those last couple, it's not the end of the world because those were gonna be extremely difficult anyway. Good question, Tammy. Okay. Um, Oh, and, and, and thank you, Sydney. Um, just to let everyone know, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted. Actually, I do want to say it right now, everybody, um, we all have a million things going on every day. And so I really appreciate you all taking a few minutes and being on tonight. But I know every one of you have friends, neighbors, classmates, teammates, just other people you know, in the neighbor, the community who weren't able to be on tonight. Please share some of this stuff with them, like the question and answer service when it's given the TIR service. Um, make sure to answer every question. Um, all, all the things that we talked about tonight, because um, because they, they will appreciate it. And these are just simple ways that a student can score much higher. Okay. Um, so let's move on here. Right. So this is such a common question. Um, People say to me, well, Tom, you know, we learned a lot from this webinar, you know, um, but bottom line is how much time should my son or my daughter, should I put in each week? I'll give you a very uh, straightforward answer. Two and a half hours per week. 
So um, that's a very reasonable amount, really. I was very, very busy in high school. I played a sport every season, so <clears throat> I didn't have a lot of free time. But anybody has two and a half hours a week if something's important to them. So I tell students, put it in your phone, you know, just like you would put into your, um, your, your phone, other things in your calendar and your schedule. Uh, you know, practice time is non-negotiable for a sport, practicing for the SAT. If you're serious about getting a top score, put in two and a half hours a week, which everyone can do. If you do that, you'll make an enormous difference in your score. So people say to me, okay, you know, that, that's reasonable. You know, I can do that. I can put two and a half hours a week. So what's the next step? Like, how can I improve my score most efficiently? So I have a couple of um, answers, but, but one obvious answer is, so NSHSS provides all members with 25% off of my self-paced SAT, CT prep, excuse me, prep program, which we call Methodize. And this is the program, students who use it, they raise their SAT score 150 points or ACT score three points. The program has been around in some iteration for 20 years now. Um, and we have over a thousand schools that are using the program. So we get a lot of data, a lot of feedback. We know the program is highly effective. We know it works. Um, it's a matter of students just using it. And again, NSH, NSHSS members get a very significant discount um, off the core, the, the cost of the program. So normally the program costs $249. But with your NSHSS member discount, you save $67, so 25%. So, um, and, and thank you, Sydney. Um, yeah, thanks, Sydney. So Sydney just, um, in the chat, she put a link to all of the different NSHSS member discounts. And again, they are significant. And this, the cost, so the cost ends up being like $187 for NSHSS. That's just a one-time fee. You, then you have access through graduation. And what you have access to is, this is what the home screen looks like. Very straightforward, intuitive. There's nothing confusing. Students just follow that green button. And the green button takes you through the entire program. You learn every trick, every strategy, every technique. And this is an example of a segment. Um, we break everything up into like five minute, 10 minute chunks. And so students are learning in small increments. They can listen to the lessons out loud. We all learn more effectively when we hear the teacher. So they're listening to the teacher, walk them through the um, concepts. And then once they've listened to um, a concept or a strategy, then of course students practice on what they just learned. They get immediate feedback. They're told if they're right or wrong, what the correct answer is. And then they're presented with explanations video explanations, audio explanations, written explanations. Um, of course, video explanations are incredibly valuable, right? When you have trouble with a question, just like everything these days, you want to YouTube something, you can just watch the video and you're listening to the teacher walk you through how to solve that type of question. You're watching the teacher's hand. You can pause it, rewind it, watch it a second time. And we're going through the underlying concepts behind that particular question. There's also a diagnostic is part of the program. So again, when you pay the, the 187 as an NSHSS member, uh, you have access to an SAT evaluation diagnostic. You have access to an ACT uh, diagnostic. Um, and you can see the time frames very reasonable. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. So if you've carved out 25 minutes on three different days, you'll get the, through the entire diagnostic. You'll have a very accurate sense of where you stand. There's, there are also full-length exams in addition to the diagnostics. So uh, you have access to four full-length practice exams, two full-length SATs and two full-length ACTs. There's also a vocabulary builder component to the program where the program is keeping a personal word list for every student. We all understand having a stronger vocabulary um, will make you more successful in high school and college and beyond. So this is just this alone is a valuable part of the program. Students can quiz themselves on the most common words. So what just about every parent and student says to me is, hey, Tom, the web-based program looks good. Methodize looks good. 
you know, we're interested, we're going to use that. Um, but we also want something in addition to the, to the web-based program. Um, so we offer many, uh, we offer classes, we offer private tutoring. And so, um, so there's the, the, the URL right there, methodlearning.com. And again, the link that Sydney put in the chat, there's discounts for everything we offer. There's discounts on our classes. There are discounts on our private tutoring that we do. Um, and I'll put my contact info up in a minute so you can reach out if you're interested in either tutoring or class. Um, but the key thing I wanted to share is um, NSHSS and I, we set up a specific coupon code for families who are on tonight. So go ahead and either take a screenshot or, um, or, or a picture with your phone or, or even just jot down a piece of paper. Uh, it's just today's date, right? So JAN31, that's the coupon code. And that entitles all of you to $100 off the cost of a class. So let me give you an example of what I mean. So here's an SAT class that we have starting um, a week from tonight, right? So um, it's from 8 to 10 Eastern. And you get 18 hours. You can see that in the, in the title, 18 hours of live instruction. So it's, it's an incredible value as far as uh, cost per hour. You're getting a lot of hours of instruction at a reasonable price, especially when you consider if you just put in the coupon code JAN31, instead of $4.99, it's just $3.99. So for $400, you're getting 18 hours of live instruction. And we record all of the classes. So if you have to miss a class, not a big deal. You can go back and you can watch the recording on demand. Um, of course, students can chat with chat back and forth with the instructor, ask questions. We don't allow students to, to chat with each other. Obviously, that would be distracting. But many students are more comfortable asking questions in this live online format than they would be in person, right? Because they don't want to raise their hand and interrupt the class. Uh, here they can just chat in questions. No one knows that they're chatting in a question. Um, and so, um, so we've seen that students who take these classes, their scores increase by just as much as students who take a class in person. And of course, I can, I can answer any, any questions people have about a class like this um, in a second. So actually, let me, let me just go to the questions, see if I can get through them quickly. Yeah, good question. Can, so Candace asks, if there's no penalty for wrong answers, how are the tests how are the tests scored? So good question. The tests are scored by number of correct answers, right? So if out of 100 questions, you get you know, 97 correct, you're going to get a certain score. Whereas if a student got an only 96, they'll get a little less. 98, they'll get a little more. Um, so good question, Candice. It's just, it's just out of raw number of questions correct. Um, yeah, Elizabeth, good question. Can I please repeat the sections of each test? Sure. So on the SAT, and I didn't have a chance to share this yet. On the SAT, there's math with a calculator and math without a calculator. People think the section without a calculator is harder. It's not harder. It just means you're supposed to be able to answer the questions without using a calculator. So, and then there's the there's a reading comprehension section, and then there's a grammar section, which they call the writing and language. So on the SAT, it's a grammar section, reading, and then two math sections. On the ACT, it's an English section, which is essentially grammar, then a math section, so get, kind of overlap there, reading section, overlap there, and then there's a section called science, but again, it's really science reasoning. Good question, Elizabeth. Um, and then, Christine, any preparation tips for younger students? So one thing I like to say is, for a student who's in like ninth or 10th grade, I don't want them doing SAT or ACT prep per se, I want them putting all of their energy and their focus into their classes, into their GPA. Um, I, it's appropriate to start preparing for the SAT or ACT in the summer before junior year, because we all know junior year gets very, um, you know, very busy. So for a lot of high achievers, the smartest thing is to do the prep in the summer before junior year, before things get, get very busy. But when you're a 10th grader or a 9th grader, just put all your energy into your GPA and your classes. 
Um, yes, Evelyn, good question. Is it a one-time payment? Yes, so Methodize is just a one-time payment uh, and the classes are just one-time payments. Um, yeah, it's a good question, Christine. So should younger grades, sophomores or freshmen, should they start using the program? So the answer is you might as well because you're getting access through graduation. You wouldn't use the program as SAT or ACT prep. What you would use it for is every math topic in Methodize is a math topic that students are doing in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. So it, it makes a lot of sense to start using the program because it, students tell us all the time, by using Methodize, it helps them in their regular math class, helps them in their English class. Obviously you're building grammar, um, you know, you're, 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 you're building your fundamental knowledge of grammar, you're improving your reading comprehension. So that would be why younger students, sophomores and freshmen should start using the program now. And again, as far as um, financially, you're getting access, you know, for, for this for the same cost anyway. Um, yeah, good question, Evelyn. Yes, Methodize um, is included for the NCSA, like the MVP members, like the top the top level at, at, at NCSA. Good questions, everybody. Okay, and we've covered ninety percent of what I wanted to cover, um, and I know we've been on for a while, but we'll we'll wrap up in a little bit. Let me just make sure I I cover a few last things. So, um, so of course, this slide is important. Um, uh, we get a lot of emails and calls after a presentation like this because parents or students they want to reach out. They want to tell me, just give me some context about their son or their daughter or you know where they're at and then they they want to hear from me like what are some things that i would recommend for a student like this so um you know please um i this i really enjoy this part of my job i spend all day every day talking with families emailing um with families so shoot me an email um tell me you know what where what your situation is and then i can recommend some options that i think are best and then there's our number, um, which again, please feel free to reach out. Um, okay, we covered this one, covered this one, covered this one. The ACT doesn't really test students on science knowledge. It's more, um, uh, you know, science concepts. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause there. Um, uh, does anybody have any other questions? Please feel free to put in the question and answer area. Um, I, I am sensitive to the fact that at a certain point it becomes information overload, right? And, and so I know that was a lot of information to absorb. Oh, and, and by the way, everybody, we have many, many other classes. So if a class like this is appealing to you, but Mondays and Wednesdays, yeah, this is a Monday, Wednesday class, if those nights are not good, we have classes on the weekends. We have Tuesday, Thursday classes. So um, we offer quite a few classes, which, um, yeah, and, and, and thanks again, Sydney. Um, so Sydney just put the, you know, the, 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 the information about the coupon code and a link to our website. So, um, so you can get all the information there. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna stop there, everybody. Let me put the contact info up just for last second. Um, yeah, I, thanks everyone. Um, and uh, good luck with the rest of this uh, school year. And any questions, reach out. Thank you.